What do you say? Are they really pure? Let us find out. Welcome to the lesson on Is matter around us pure? At the end of the lesson, we will be able to define mixture, solution, suspension and colloids. Demonstrate the separation of components of a mixture. Demonstrate the separation of two immiscible liquids. Explain sublimation process. Explain chromatography. Explain the procedure to separate mixture of two miscible liquids. Explain the separation of gases from air. Explain crystallization. Differentiate between elements and compounds. Dad, is this milk really pure? No, Abhay. This is not pure as it contains water, fat and proteins. Since this milk contains more than one substance, it is a mixture. We see most of the matter around us in the form of mixture of two or three pure components. Mixture? What is this, Dad? Mixture consists of more than one substance mixed in any proportion. Mixtures such as salt in water and sugar in water has uniform composition throughout. Such mixtures are called homogeneous mixtures. Mixtures such as oil and water, salt and sulfur have non-uniform compositions throughout. Such mixtures are called heterogeneous mixtures. I heard about solution in my class. What is that? Solution is a homogeneous mixture of two or more substances. Solutions are solid like alloy, liquid like lemonade or gaseous like air. A solution consists of solvent and solute. Solvent is a component present in larger amount and solute is a component present in smaller amount in the solution. Depending upon the amount of solute present in a solution, it can be called a dilute, concentrated or a saturated solution. When concentration of solute is comparatively low, then solution is dilute and when concentration is high, solution is called concentrated. When no more solute can be dissolved in a solution at a given temperature, it is called as a saturated solution. For example, if we continue to dissolve salt in some water, then after certain stage, no more salt can be dissolved further. This is because the solution has become saturated. The concentration of solution is the amount of solute present in a given amount of solution. And Dad, if solution is heterogeneous, then what is it called? A heterogeneous mixture is called suspension in which solute particles do not dissolve but remain suspended. Solute particles settle down when suspension is left undisturbed. Apart from solution and suspension, one more state called colloidal solution is there. Colloidal solution? What is this, Dad? In a colloid or a colloidal solution, the particles are uniformly spread throughout the solution. Due to relatively smaller size of particles as compared to that of a suspension, the mixture appears to be homogeneous. But actually, a colloidal solution is a heterogeneous mixture. For example, milk. Because of the small size of colloidal particles, we cannot see them with our naked eyes. But these particles can easily scatter a beam of visible light. The scattering of a beam of light is called the Tyndall effect. Tyndall effect can be observed when a beam of light enters a room through a small hole. This happens due to scattering of light by the particles of dust in the air. Dad, can we separate the components of a mixture? Yes, why not? Dad, can we obtain colored component from this ink? Yes, let us do an activity. First, fill half of the beaker with water. 
Now put a watch glass on the mouth of the beaker. Put a few drops of ink on the watch glass. Now start heating the beaker. You can observe that evaporation is taking place from the watch glass. Heat the beaker till you find only dye on the watch glass. Oh, now I understand that ink is a mixture of dye and water. How do dairy people separate cream from milk? They simply use method of centrifugation. Centrifugation? How is this method carried out? Centrifugation is based on the principle that if a liquid is spun rapidly, the denser particles are forced to the bottom and lighter particles stay at the top. Centrifuging machine is used for this process. At home, by using a milk churner, centrifugation can be done. Do you know how we separate a mixture of two immiscible liquids? No, Dad. Please tell me how to do it. Okay, let's separate kerosene oil from water. To do this, we will use a separating funnel. Pour the mixture of kerosene oil and water in a separating funnel. Let it stand undisturbed for some time, so that separate layers of oil and water are formed. Open the stopcock of the separating funnel and pour out the lower layer of water carefully. Close the stopcock of the separating funnel as the oil reaches the stopcock. So, the principle is that immiscible liquids separate out in layers depending on their densities. Dad, I learnt about sublimation process. Where do we use them? Sublimation is the process in which a substance changes from solid to gaseous state on heating. Sublimation process is used to separate mixture that contains sublimable volatile component and a non-sublimable impurity. Some examples of solids which sublime are ammonium chloride, camphor, naphthalene and anthracene. When mixture of ammonium chloride and salt is heated in a china dish, as shown, ammonium chloride evaporates and solidifies and thus it gets separated from the mixture. Do you know, Abhe, what is the dye in black ink? Is it a single color? No, I am not sure. Let's obtain colored component from the ink. Take a thin strip of filter paper. Draw a line on it using a pencil approximately 3 cm above the lower edge. Put a small drop of ink at the center of the line. Let it dry. Lower the filter paper into a beaker containing water so that the drop of ink on the paper is just above the water level as shown and leave it undisturbed. As the water rises on the filter paper, it takes along with it the dye particles. A dye is a mixture of two or more colors. The colored component that is more soluble in water rises faster and thus the colors get separated. This process of separation of components of a mixture is called chromatography. Chroma in Greek means color. Chromatography is used to separate colors in a dye, pigments from natural colors and drugs from blood. How can we separate a mixture of two miscible liquids? Let us separate acetone and water mixture. We will take this mixture in a distillation flask. Heat the mixture slowly, keeping watch at the thermometer present in the flask. Since acetone has lower boiling point than water, it vaporizes and condenses in condenser and can be collected from the condenser outlet. Water is left behind in the distillation flask. What if the difference in boiling points is less between the components? For this, fractional distillation process is used. The apparatus is similar to that of for simple distillation. 
except that a fractioning column is fitted in between the distillation flask and the condenser. The beads in a fractionating column provide surface for the vapors to cool and condense. Air is a homogeneous mixture and can be separated into its components by fractional distillation. If we want oxygen gas from air, we have to separate out all other gases present in the air. The air is compressed by increasing the pressure and is then cooled by decreasing the temperature to get liquid air. This liquid air is allowed to warm up slowly in a fractional distillation column where gases get separated at different heights depending upon their boiling points. Nitrogen has the lowest boiling point and is separated first. At the middle of the distillation, argon is separated. Oxygen is separated at last as its boiling point is a little high. Do you see this salt? How do we get this from seawater? Seawater is purified to get pure salt. Yes, to remove the impurities of salt, the process of crystallization is used. Crystallization is a process that separates a pure solid in the form of its crystals from a solution. Crystallization is also used to separate crystals of alum from impure samples. Let us do an experiment to obtain pure copper sulfate from an impure sample. We will take some impure sample of copper sulfate in a china dish and dissolve it in water. Now, filter the impurities. Evaporate water from the copper sulfate solution so as to get a saturated solution. Cover the solution with a filter paper and leave it undisturbed at room temperature to cool slowly for a day. You will get the crystals of copper sulfate in the china dish. Color, hardness, rigidity, fluidity, Density, melting point and boiling point are the physical properties of any substance. Ice, water and water vapor are different physical states of the same substance. The physical properties displayed by them are different, but they are chemically the same. Both water and cooking oil are liquid, but their chemical characteristics are different. They differ in odor and inflammability. Oil burns in air, but water extinguishes fire. Burning is a chemical change. Chemical change brings change in the chemical properties of matter and we get a new substance. You told me about mixtures, but what are the types of pure substance? They are mainly classified as elements and compounds. According to Antoine Laurent Lavoisier, element is a basic form of matter that cannot be broken down into simpler substances by chemical reactions. For example, iron, gold and silver are elements. They exist in their simplest form. Elements can be normally divided into metals, non-metals and metalloids. What are all these? Metals, non-metals and metalloids. Metals are shiny and they conduct heat and electricity. They are ductile and malleable and they have colors. Mercury is the only metal that is liquid at room temperature. Non-metals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They are not lustrous, sonorous and malleable. Examples of non-metals are hydrogen, oxygen and chlorine. Some elements have intermediate properties between those of metals and non-metals. They are called metalloids. Examples are boron, silicon and germanium. What about compounds? A compound is a substance composed of two or more elements chemically combined with one another in a fixed proportion. Water is a compound made of hydrogen and oxygen elements mixed in a fixed proportion. 
Similarly, salt is also a compound formed by chemical reaction of sodium and chlorine. Then dad, what is the actual difference between mixture and compound? Are both the same? Elements or compounds just mix together to form a mixture and no new compound is formed. But elements react to form new compounds. A mixture has a variable composition. In a compound, the composition of each new substance is always fixed. A mixture shows the properties of the constituent substances. In compound, the new substance has totally different properties. The constituents of a mixture can be separated fairly, easily by physical methods, but the constituents in a compound can be separated only by chemical or electrochemical reactions. From the mixture of iron and sulfur, iron can be separated using a magnet, which is a physical method. But on heating the two elements strongly, we get a compound, which has totally different properties compared to the combining elements. Visit ATEC Academy on www.atecedu.com or contact on 904